Perfect. Okay. Okay, so how to deal with mothers and how to transcend mothers. Um, and I'll share a little bit about my own experience uh, with uh, dealing with my mother. So the idea is to, to have transcendence of, of a mother so that you can't get hooked in by anything they say or do and you can't be affected you, or you can't be disconnected in your spiritual connection. So one of the things to know is, one of the things I did with my mother and then one, uh, was to have the intention that there was nothing she could do or say or, or, uh, or behave that can affect me. And that's something that we know from A Course in Miracles. One of the lessons in A Course in Miracles, I'm not a victim of the world I see. Also, lesson 14 of A Course in Miracles says when you're cancelling something to be or saying God did not create something, to be specific in how you do it, not to be general. So what that means is uh, if you're having difficulties being around your mother or your mother having a capacity to affect you, you have to find out what are the ways in which I get hooked in? How do I get hooked in and then seem to lose my spiritual grounding or my spiritual connection? And what I found while dealing with my own mother, uh, what, I did a, a number of spiritual tools, but um, what, one of the tools that I did, uh, well, one of them was to have, was just to be aware. I found out that uh, my mother's facial expressions could, uh, could, un could uh, unhook me, could get me hooked in. My mother's facial expressions, my mother's vocal tone, um, the words she used if she was uh, in any way critical of how I was leading my life, then that could get me hooked in. Um, also, um, I could get hooked in if I felt like my mother was, uh, was not looking after herself, I would get hooked in as well. So, so all of those things I could, I, I was able to um, use many Course in Miracle lessons on, like uh, God, uh, I cancel my belief that my mother's facial expressions uh, can affect me, I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold in mind. I cancel my belief that my mother's criticisms uh, can affect me, I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold in mind. I cancel my, you know, I cancel my belief my mother's moods can affect me, I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold in mind. I cancel my belief my mother's vocal tone can affect me, I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold in mind. I also wanted to cancel the, the, the special projection of the word mother in my consciousness. So I would say I cancel my belief in my mother, I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold in mind. I didn't want my ego to be projecting all the baggage that goes on with saying the word mother. So I'd cancel my belief in the word mother. You know, I would also try and cancel all my past associations with my mother. I cancel, I cancel my memories and associations of my mother. I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold in mind. Just so that I could, I could just clear away all the associated baggage and expectations and outcomes that I was projecting. Um, also was... Um, uh, other things you can do with, with mothers, if you feel uh, disconnected or if you feel drained, you know, I cancel my belief, I feel drained or negative uh, with my mother. I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold in mind. You could, those could be done. Um, so you're just uh, releasing all the projections. You can use other Course in Miracles lessons with your mother. Uh, I pray for a miracle to see my mother's facial expressions differently, or I pray for a miracle to see my mother's vocal tone differently, or I pray for a miracle to see my mother differently, or uh, I pray for a miracle to see my memories of my mother differently. So all of those, that one can be done, or instead of my mother's facial expressions, I could see peace. Instead of, um, instead of, uh, my, instead of um, my mother's criticisms, I could see peace. So 
those uh, lessons could be used or with that. I mean, uh, so you can see uh, whatever. Now, uh, like I had the, um, also, you know, the thing is like often you might feel sorry for your mother. She might have uh, physical illnesses or mental illnesses or whatever. And uh, so I would use like God did not create, for example, God did not create uh, heart failure and my mother said is not real. I had a, had a miracle happen uh, where I said uh, one day my mother had oedema, like swelling in, in her, one of her legs. And uh, I did God did not create oedema in my mother's uh, leg and so it is not real. And with the same day the, the swelling in my mother's leg went down and was gone within about 24 hours. So sometimes just by uh, uh, saying God did not create it and so it's not real or I cancel my belief in it and so it's, uh, I'm an infinite being, uh, sometimes there would be profound effects, uh, you know, quite miraculously in my mother in just clearing away those perceptions so I could cancel my belief. Also, another, another thing that I say to people dealing with difficult mothers is to have an intention to go to the observer before you meet your mother or if you can see your mother is calling you on the phone just have a, a silent intention before you pick up the phone or before you meet your mother to go into what I call the observer position the observer is like you just have a grounding in the observer so just go to the observer what's obs you could say like what's observing my thoughts and my body get to that witnessing of yourself and once you get anchored into being in the observer or the witnesser position, in that kind of detached witnessing position, then pick up the phone or then just enter your mother's house and try and stay in the observer and not pick up any thoughts or get hooked into anything and maintain that observer position for as long as you can. And you'll learn each time you go in what hooks you in and then next time to make sure that you stay in the observer or go if you get hooked into something, like for example, you're in the observer, you go into your mother's house and she makes a remark, and then you get engaged with your ego and you get hooked in and uh, spiritually disconnected, just go into what's observing my disconnection, just to how, you, how you're experiencing it, and try and disconnect. So really when you're with your mother, you're trying to practice being in the observer. And when you're getting hooked in, go to the observer, what's getting hooked in? And if you keep practicing that, it will get easier and easier to maintain an observer position. So you're trying to just stay, what's witnessing me and my mother in this room? Is there a detached observer of the whole situation? And if, you're, if you link into that observer, uh, that observer is not going to get hooked in and is not in the, in the identified ego position of the thoughts in the body. So it's much more of a detached uh, non-local witnessing in the room and as you maintain that you'll find that you'll be, uh, you won't easily be able to get hooked in, you have to like hook into your own ego identity and then your ego identity will have to get hooked into your mother before you, you, you get uh, hooked in in that way. Yeah. I think with me it's so, it's like that, it's so quick the hooking in with, is that okay? Yeah, okay. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I think we the the hooking in is so um, fast. Yes. Mm -hmm. It just yeah. it's like instantaneous <laughs> with with my mum and with this particular dynamic. Just because it's so it's the longest one I've had. Mm -hmm. It's yes. the longest dynamic I've got going. Mm -hmm. That's well, tricky. And, yeah. Okay. So if if it's if it's very very quick, the other thing to know is, you mm. know, if you keep practicing the observer regularly, one of the things to know. Uh, is that, you know, and here's, and I've often said, like St. Francis says, said, what you're looking for is where you're looking from. And where you're looking from, the observer position is like, it's, a, it's like almost like trying to be in a different location. So, like, let's say I'm in front of my mother. If you're going to spend the whole, like, afternoon with your intention to be in the observer position, it's like you're trying to be in that which is observing the whole room or observing the whole situation. So really your intent, like your intent for the whole meeting is not to get hooked into anything that's happening in the room. 
So I'm just try trying to, to explain this. It's like you're not trying to get hooked into any of the information for the whole, for the whole duration of the visit. The whole, your whole intention is just to be in the detached witnessing. So if you do that, it's like if something gets hooked in in a split second into what's happening with, with some words the mother has said or some facial expressions, your intent is not to get is to go straight back to that which is observing. So if I can just sort of explain that, it's like you're, one is almost going in there not to get hooked into one's own ego or, or the drama that's unfolding over the evening, but one is just to stay like inwards in the detached observer. So you make that the commitment, your orientation for the whole evening is to be in that which is observing, which is like an inward direction. Now let's say your ego picks up something and gets hooked in. Again, it's like you should have like an intention set, which is like to go straight back, because your whole evening is not to engage in the drama that's going to be unfolding in the room, but to be in that which is the detached observer. So does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So it's like almost like um, even though the bo my body's in the room and it might be communicating with the mother and the mother might be saying things, really, if you like, you could say in a loose way, the attention or the focus is really on being in the witnesser position, which is like an internal position, as opposed to letting the ego get engrossed into the data or the phenomena or the perceptions that are unfolding within the room. Now, if I'm not in that orientation, then I'll be in my ego position, I'll be in my own thinking, in my own body, and then it'll be like, it'll be quite easy to get hooked in because it'll be personal. I'll be referencing the information that's unfolding within the room in a personal fr frame, like I am my thinking, I am my body, and then someone is making a personal remark against my identity as a thinking bodiness. Whereas if my intention set was just to be in the witnesser of my body and the witnesser of what's happening in the whole room and not to get engaged in the drama, then my intention for the whole duration will be being in the witness. I mean, I might get pulled in, but I'll have a defense because I'm, my intention is to go straight back and not to allow myself to get hooked into the drama. So it's, like a, it's almost like an orientation for the whole duration. Orientation is observer. You know, uh, also realize that as soon as you um, are hook, you're hookable when you're in your identity. You're hookable when you're in your person. You're hookable when you're in your believing that you are the thinking and the body. So it's very easy to get very quickly hooked in. If you're the observer of your thinking and the body and your mother in the room, and your whole intention is just to stay in that detached observer. It's almost like you have a double defense because you have to slip into your own thinking and then get hooked into what's happening, referencing what's happening in the room. Does that make sense? It, it does all make sense. It mm. does all make sense. But even as you're saying it, I know that I, like when you're saying that the double, uh, double, what did you say? It's like a double defense. Double defense. The big, could you say what double defense was again? Is yeah. being in your, if you're not in your, if you're not hooked into your own thinking, then you don't get hooked into the other's thinking. Yes, that's right. Um, but I, I don't find it so easy not mm. to get hooked into my own thinking when I'm in that situation. Mm. Well, hence the thing of like practicing the observer regularly during the week. Right. You see, because if you're like practicing mm. like once an hour or every day. The observer, it becomes more intuitive and quicker and easier to, to return to. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you're trying to use the observer just in an emergency situation, yeah. mm -hmm. it's like it's very difficult to get that mm -hmm. referencing. So, like I at the moment, one of my favorite YouTube videos is watching the Muji, Muji Invitation mm -hmm. on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I often will watch that in the morning, and that gives me, I like to do it in the morning because that gives me a quick referencing to just spontaneously just being in the observer position. And the more I practice on a daily basis being in the observer position, it's easier to go into that position when I'm in a difficult situation. Uh, because it's like familiar. It's like the observer position is familiar. But you're quite right. But 
if you can't do it on a regular basis, like spending, like for example, before you go and visit or speak to your mother, spending 10 minutes, you know, watching some Muji mm -hmm. self-inquiry on YouTube, or just spending 10 minutes trying to go to the observer of your own thinking, will help you just remember the accessing that observer position, so that once you go into the conversation or into the life situation, you'll have that, almost like a memory, so that you can quickly realize that you're now hooked into your own thinking, and now in hooked into your own thinking, you're easily susceptible to take things personally and get hooked into the drama unfolding uh, with, uh, with uh, your mother. So, spending a few minutes before, mm -hmm. but ideally, like having a daily practice of the observer, it becomes easier and more intuitive. And the more you practice the observer, you are actually deleting your ego. So, you start to, uh, it's almost like every time you go into the observer of your own thinking and the body, it's like the observer position becomes more and more naturally who you are and the, the belief and the capacity to get hooked into your own thinking, your body starts to dissolve bit by bit the more you do it. So that's another, um, another, uh, another benefit of doing the observer. The other thing to know is to use the, what I call the field of feelings. Um, you can use the field of feelings tool in a couple of ways around mothers. Often there's a lot of uh, emotional suppressed feelings that are associated with the mother, especially if they can unhook you. So there's, there's a couple of ways to do it. Now one of the ways to use the field of feelings is before you uh, uh, phone your mother or visit your mother, is to just sit down in a chair for however long you could spare, whether it's 10 minutes or 20 minutes, whatever it is, and just sit down and just become aware of what feelings or sensations are being experienced, let's say, in the body. And just let go of attaching to thoughts and stories, and just try and feel out any emotions or feelings that are present within the body, and just try and get to a state as near as possible to peace and serenity. So you're just releasing all the feelings. Quite it could quite be that before you meet your mother you might get certain feelings arising in anticipation of meeting your mother so you can feel those out there might be some anxiety or there might be some sensations coming up mm -hmm. so you can feel those out trying to get to a place of peace you'll then find that the grounding when you meet your mother will be much more stable and you'll be less easily to get hooked in another great thing is if you become hooked into your mother you have a lot of feelings after you leave your mother, you know, because you got hooked in into the drama. So just spending five or ten minutes just after you leave your mother to, to absorb the feelings of reactivity that have happened after you've met your mother, if you do that before and after, as whenever you can, you'll find that each time you meet your mother there'll be a greater sense of peace and serenity and uh, less of a capacity to get hooked in because all those suppressed emotions from childhood and throughout all of life of getting triggered they have like a reservoir of emotional feelings so if you keep feeling them out before and after you'll find that the intensity of those feelings will become less and less over time so that, that's another uh, tool of doing it and once you know you clear out all your perceptions and all the suppressed feelings um, there, there is nothing to trigger or if you learn to just keep going to the observer those hooks will get less and less intense and you'll be able to maintain so basically as you're using all of the tools you'll be transcending you'll find that there'll be various things after a while you have transcended various things so this was a this was a great joy in my own mother's experience you know I found it took me actually it took me I think about five years to transcend, I think nearly, I think all the hooks that my mother did, because I'd find that, you know, she would keep, if they're still in a, probably like a mother, you know, she'll know all the hooks, so you have to clear every single hook, and but you'd find that, I'd find that various hooks would get deleted and would not come back, mm -hmm. and then there'd be another hook that you hadn't, mm -hmm. I hadn't been aware of, and I have to work on that, and each hook, there'd be a great sense of joy, like I'm unhookable with that hook, what I'd find is like. Uh, let's say there, there was, a, I mean, I'll try and think of an example. Uh, let's say um, it would be criticism. 
you know, like I would, uh, I'd find that if she said something in a critical voice, I'd get hooked in. But I'd have this intention that I would use all the tools until there's nothing she could say critical I could not get hooked in. And then after a while, it found that I'd have no reaction to any criticism she'd say. And then I found that for a few months, she'd just keep saying it, even though I'd get no reaction from me and it would have no effect. And then I found the miracle would be she'd, st she'd just stop saying criticisms for good. And I had years of a, a loving relationship with my mother before she recently passed away. So it's like you transcend the hook and then you find you're tested on the hook, even though you have no reaction for a period of time. And then I found that she stopped doing it. It's like after that period of not getting hooked in for a period of time. And then the, the, there was a, like a miracle. It's like she stopped the criticism. So I found in that that was the process. So you find the different hooks, you transcend the hooks, then you may find more hooks are revealed to you, you transcend those hooks. And then but you do actually tran you, you can you know if you have the intention to hundred percent transcend the hook and you use all the tools I've shared in this video, you can get to one you know, I, I have experience of hundred percent transcendence, so I have to share that. So it is possible to 100% transcend the hook if you just keep working on it and then you get to 100% transcendence. Um, the other thing, um, just to share a little bit of my own story, you know, you can, um, if you have that, if you have that, you can, you can transcend your mother. The other thing is like if you're getting, um, there are also what I call collective belief systems that we all collectively buy into, you know, like uh, one of the collective beliefs is like certain people can drain my energy. We all have these collective beliefs. You just cancel my belief. You cancel my belief that my mother can drain my energy. I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold in mind. Because if you believe these beliefs, they're very subtle. But then, but when you are restored to your your infinite presence, there is nothing. There is nothing that can unhook you. So you just have to like. You can also like pray for a miracle. Another prayer that I do, uh, which I quite enjoy at the moment, is like um, Holy Spirit healed conditions which had manifested a suffering mother. Help me to see her in truth and I pray for a miracle to see her differently. So you can use that. Um, another, another prayer uh, which I learned from Dr. David R. Hawkins, what I coined the Yanti Karma prayer. If I see something in another, I assume that I've done the same thing to others in this lifetime or past lives. So, like, let's say I perceive my mother as being controlling. So I could say, uh, if I use the anti-karma prayer, I can say, um, I pray for forgiveness for the one in me who's been a controlling parental figure in this lifetime and past lives. So I just assume that karmically what I'm experiencing I've probably done to others in this lifetime and others and I pray for forgiveness for the one in me who's inflicted that karma onto others either in this lifetime or in past lives. So I've used that to clear my karma uh, as well in that way. Um, so I've shared my experience there and it is possible to get full transcendence. Um, if there's hurtful things that uh, the mother says, you can be specific in uh, applying the Course in Miracle Lessons to clear those specific uh, uh, perceived attack thoughts or uh, just keep uh, going to the... The other way to do it is to um, something I learned from uh, my practice as a hypnotherapist is you can visualize yourself uh, before, without even having to meet your mother you visualize her saying some words that you find triggering so you try and reawaken the experience in your visualization and then try and go to the observer and see if you can immediately go to the observer once the, you've, been tri you've triggered yourself through the visualization um, uh, and um, there is um, another one um, I can do. Uh, uh, oh, another thing to do, which people can try, which is not really a spiritual practice, it's more of an acupressure practice, 
is an emotional freedom technique where you can try tapping some points. Um, uh, do you know how to do, do Yeah, you can tap points and see if that can release some of the emotions. Like um, how you do that is um, uh, even though uh, even though my mother's criticism, even though I'm triggered by my mother's criticisms, I deeply and completely accept myself. And then you t just tap the various points while feeling the emotions in the body. So EFT can be found how to do that on YouTube. So that's another way to clear it. Um, but if you use, uh, just consistently use all of those tools and have the inner intention for 100% transcendence, so there's nothing she can do, say, or behave that can unhook you. But if you are being hooked, find out what the hooks are. Become aware, like an investigator. You know, if you're in the detached observer, you should be conscious of what hooked you in, so that when you leave the situation, you can start using all the tools to try and work on those hooks so you make progress for next time so it's less easily for you to get hooked in by those hooks because when you're in the observer you, you need to become conscious of what hooks you in well, how do you lose your observer for what hook you should be conscious of that so that next time you can make progress on uh, not being so easily susceptible to that hook yeah so i know for me i think the hook is it's the abusive words. There's lots of things that are difficult. Yes. But when there are certain words used about me to describe me yes. in my life, yes. th that's when I get hooked. Right. So, you know, like use everything on those abusive words. Like I pray for a miracle to see the specific abusive words differently. I cancel my belief in the, in the, in the specific abusive word. I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold in mind. Um, try and visualize. Uh, your mother saying the abusive word and see if you can go to the observer of that in, in your imagination. And so if you, as you rehearse it in your imagination over and over, going to the observer as you visualize your mother saying the abusive word, then see how you fare in the real life situation. But you've practically rehearsed it, being in the observer. You, you find it will be easier to be in the observer because you've done it. But just by cancelling the belief or praying for a miracle to see it differently, you'll find that the abusive world word will have less of a capacity. You can also just visualize yourself um, just staying in the observer and not getting hooked into any, anything, no matter what uh, abusive words are said by your mother, and just staying in that observer position. Um, you know, uh, praying for a miracle to see it differently. Often the Holy Spirit will give you a different context to see your mother and you have an aha moment. Oh, I can frame the whole experience from a different spiritual angle, and then that can release the, um, uh, the, the capacity for you to easily get identified into the drama in that situation. Is there anything else? Mm, that's really, really helpful. Yeah. Okay.